uh, Your Royal Highness, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for having me back. Um, and thanks for the warm introduction, Lord Gardner. Uh, it's been an incredibly busy year and a lot has been done by the department, the industry and our team back at headquarters. But I wanted to talk this year about now that the CED is in place, about how we unleash the power, if the slide's going to come up, oh, of the central equine database. So there's a number of speakers who will be talking around this from the veterinary side, from the stud book side, from various other things. You'll see that all coming, but I'll talk to you and give you a kind of grounding in it. But first, some background. So we produce the central equine database. We manage it for uh, DEFRA. But it also, uh, we produce uh, national identification, verification, and traceability systems. Um, there are 1.3 million records. There are also 81 PIOs. There are only 65 that are live at the second, uh, but some are managed and some have legacy data in the system, which are actually quite, quite tricky to manage, but the system is starting to cope with it. There are some, these two other stats next to it are quite important, particularly from the new statutory instrument perspective. There are 32% of the animals registered on the CED are ruled out of the food chain. But actually, one in six currently have an unknown food chain status, which is not ideal. Uh, the other thing is that since the new statutory instrument has come in, actually, the recorded microchips on the CED are down 2% uh, since that. And it's now a requirement for all equines to be microchipped. Hopefully with the new things that we're about to launch, you're going to see how this becomes a lot easier for people to do it and a lot easier for people to comply. We produce the uh, National Chip Checker. It's free to use, and it has around about 1,000 searches a week done on it. It's been very successful, but it's actually started to identify some of the issues with the data that are on there. People are calling the call center and saying, for example, my microchip isn't found on the system. I've got a microchip. It's written in my passport. Uh, my food chain state is wrong. What do I do about that? I can't find my horse. What do I do about that? So this is really, really important stuff that has started to work in conjunction with the G word, which is a bit less popular as the B word, but is now the G word. And this is, this is something that's been laid bare by what's going on with the CED. We have new regulations that have come in, and they have both uh, civil and criminal sanctions for non-compliance. So you really, really need to check the data that is held on the central equine database about your animals. If you can clean that data, you are able to then move forwards in a compliant manner and start to address your passports, the validity of the data surrounding those. But if you, are, if you have horses that are registered to you that you don't own anymore because you've sold them some time ago even, or they're dead, you can still technically be liable for those equines. It's really important that you, you get to the data. Um, that, that it can include fines, it can include bigger sanctions than that. The great news is that to do this very shortly will be free, and it's also incredibly quick and easy to do it. So with the digital stable, we're about to uh, allow you to go in and check your data. You can go in and start to identify yourself. It's very important that you identify yourself. We have some very sophisticated systems that underpin this that do financial level um, checks. They also are very, very quick and very easy. But this means that you tell us who you are and where you live. And that's really important because that then underpins how you interact with the whole system. Um, we have a, the system will clear everybody. Um, and then it sweeps the central equine database for any rec records that match you and your address. It pulls them back. You'll be going, oh my goodness me, I haven't had those horses for years. Uh, you will uh, start to clean those, that data through. And it will also deal with things like previous address uh, and uh, previous name, for example, with marriages. Um, you can start to make decisions about the horses and start to alert the, the central equine database uh, in an amber data status. This is really, really important because actually it's the PIO that you need to tell and the system tells the PIO and this PIO is still in charge of enacting any changes that need to happen. So Eva will talk more about that in her speech. Um, you've then got uh, the details of the passports that you've got in front of you that you haven't changed the name and address on. 
you can change those there and then send it straight away through to the, to the PIO. So if we come onto the digital stable, you now have the ability to manage all your equine identities in one place. You've got a full traceability system that underpins everything that's going on. You've got the location of the animal, whether it's for sale. Uh, you, can stop, you can stop bad sales being done if it's on livery. You can do all sorts of things with documents. It's a phenomenal system that is about to be launched at the end of the month, but it pro provides verified vaccination status, animal ID. You can report dead. You can report missing. You can report microchips. And you can upload this and notify the PIO in real time. And it shows up on the national chip checker. Uh, for example, if you uh, say that a horse is missing, it will show up on the national chip checker with instructions of what to do about this. You can also start to buy and move your horse identities over. This is really, really important because this goes via the PIO. The PIO has to say whether you're the new owner, previous owner, but it actually underpins the whole, uh, all of research because that digital identity can go with the horse into the new digital stable. You can have alerts that are targeted nationally, regionally, locally. You can have best practice that comes in. It starts to target things for people about microchipping, complying with the law. But it also starts to do things like uh, outbreaks targeted to you and horses that are at risk. I know that Richard is going to talk about that a bit, and so is David. We've got biosecurity. We've got the ability to uh, deliver event biosecurity, verified vaccinations, move through the digital stable, and produce a, what we would call affectionately a boarding pass. It's really important because event organizers can then have trust. They can send information about what you need to do. The horse isn't vaccinated. You need to get it vaccinated. It cannot appear at the place. You've got clever stuff that works in the background. The horse is vaccinated currently and verified by a vet, but by the time you, put, you, by the time you go to the event, it will be out of time. So you need to get that done. Or the animal is eligible to race in this case. So you've then got the ticket that is de delivered, and it means that you can use uh, fast lane ac action and fast lane into the uh, event itself to stop the uh, worrying of animals and the stress of animals in the backs of trucks. You then move on to uh, the biometric passport service. So this is about to come out. This all plugs in. It pins in. And um, that will deliver you a smart card. It updates the PIO. It's an enabling platform that any of the PIOs can use, and it moves their technology on. You've then got the biosecurity and traceability system. This provides full access to export. This is an international hub that does information backwards and forwards. The stud books, PIOs can plug into it. Enforcement, border security, everybody can plug into it. Vets, you can check high health certificates. So if there's one message, I've talked a lot about things that are coming, but if there's one message that you should take away from today, please check your data when this comes out. It'll be out at the end of the month, beginning of April. If you want to find out about it, register on the website. If not, check in at the beginning of April. And check your data and make sure everything's up to date. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.